Hey guys, so today I'm going to identify a pattern and the pattern is not what you think it is, but if you wanted to be a good MTG financer, I don't know who would want to do that, but if you wanted to do that, understanding patterns and recognizing trends is very important. Now, one trend that Tolerian Community College has hyped up is the popper trend. So popper is a format where you only can play commons. And the great thing about commons is there is not a single common on the reserve list. So they can be reprinted and when they are reprinted, they are often reprinted as commons. Therefore, they wouldn't be that expensive. So popper is an excellent format. And I do believe the future of paper magic will be popper. I think Tolarian Community College is right. He rightly identifies this as a uh, he makes deck techs, he makes uh, videos on it, and he has really committed into the popper format, which may seem strange. He's even invented the standard popper, the modern popper, so not just popper for legacy, but popper for even standard. And the beauty of popper is it does bring magic to the people, and that's something that I think as the cards get more and more expensive, we have Mythic Planeswalkers, we have the Expeditions, we have Masterpieces galore. And Magic in general as a hobby is getting more expensive when most hobbies are actually getting cheaper at this time. So in many other card games, uh, Pokemon is on Walmart for $3 a pack now. Uh, They're quote on sale, but I think this sale goes on forever. In other card games, Buddy Fight is relatively cheap. Card Fight Vanguard has always been uh, inexpensive. And Yu-Gi-Oh! has, if you look at the box prices on a big retailer, it's much cheaper now than it used to be. Paper card games are getting cheaper because they have to. There's too much competition from digital games. Um, every few months, a new digital mobile game comes out. Uh, Dragonly Lost is the new one I'm playing. And it's vying for your, your time and your money. Popper, Popper is a amazing format. And I actually invested in Popper before I played it. And I can tell you I have reaped the rewards of my Popper. I have old videos where I just buy all these Popper things, but I wasn't really into it. I was just buying them because Tolarian Community College was propping it up. I was like, okay, this is a new format. Tolarian likes it. He knows what he's doing and look at the prices of them now. I mean, I have, they sell incredibly well and it's a lot easier for you to sell a tier one popper deck than a tier one standard modern or especially a legacy deck. So he's absolutely right. Popper is the future of paper magic. Um, I have almost no doubt about that. The one thing about paper magic is it is paper. It's literally cardboard paper. There's nothing special about the cardboard. Some of them, yeah, some of them have stickers and some of them are foil. But these cardboards can be easily produced in a different country en masse for five cents a card or less. So there's nothing special about the actual cardboard that's printed on. And with all the reprints and the lazy designs and the continuous mythic planeswalker editions, it's very taxing. And I don't want to spend money. I don't want to have a card and then know that there's a better version of this card and if I spend $250 I can get this better version of the card when it took me a lot of money just to open you know the open booster packs to get this mythic planeswalker when the full art version is just better looking I like popper and popper the whole point of popper is it's not supposed to be pimp but like if you wanted to spend some money on foiling out yeah your your decks can get incredibly expensive Uh, the decks are very diverse and it's very powerful some of the most powerful cards in magic are commons and the the beauty of this uh the end beauty of what i think popper represents it represents magic before we had prices in secondary markets that's what it feels like to me when I play Popper. I've never felt that way. Uh, maybe eighth grade or seventh grade when we were just, you had an Inquest magazine and 
it was 10 months old and no one knew what the price of any car it just you played what you wanted to play because everything was who knows if it's a rare or common no one can tell the difference and that's what popper represents to me it's not really about the money and stuff um, it's more about the fact that the money is not a factor it's just not a factor it's something where if you think about it logically why has money why has a secondary market been such a big factor in magic like the reserve list was after chronicles and now which the coast has been quite involved it is not a mystery why they pick certain planeswalkers to be mythics it's not a mystery why they pick certain masterpieces and reprint sets i mean let's just talk about the reprint sets if you think chronicles more cards are being reprinted because there's more player base and yeah i get the numbers blah 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 but my gosh our ultimate masters is that 1399 booster pack the ultimate masters also has a box tower and then we had masters 25 then we have iconic masters i mean it's just Masters after Masters, Modern Masters 2017, Modern Masters 2, Modern Masters 2015, Modern Master, I think that was 2000, yeah, that was 2, Modern Masters 1, Conspiracy, which printed, uh, they take the crown, show and tell, and sneak attack, which were pretty much, let's be honest, really good reprints, uh, Battle Bond. It's reprint after reprints after reprints, and some of these master sets are 100% reprints. Therefore, it's not creativity. They're just trying to get your money. There's no other way for me to say it except it is a shameless cash grab with the most lazy way to get the most money possible. Now, Popper will survive. Popper will survive all of this because it is a fun, powerful format. And the professor rightly identifies it as the future of his player base. So if the professor's goal is to grow his channel, to make a living from Magic or Gathering, he has to actually do what's best. He has to do what's best for his subscribers. And he has recognized this as a business. Now, the Mana Source has not recognized this. He continues to, I, I use the term fraud uh, because I, I guess there's that's a good term to use. Uh, fraud, or he continues to manipulate his subscriber base, but I really do feel like Tolarian Community College, although he's very good friends with the Man of Source, they've taken two very different outlooks on it, and his outlook is he does want people to play more Magic, and he does actually enjoy the game of Magic. I can tell from his deck techs. So when I watch one of his popper deck techs, I can tell that he actually plays a deck. He actually has the deck made. Not because it's cheaper or anything, but he's actually play tested the deck. When I look at, you know, when I look at the uh, top eight deck tech that Mana Source uses, it's exactly a verbatim top eight deck list. I'm like, you don't own any of these cards, do you? <laughs> like, at all. You just read an article that told you how they interact and what cards to sideboard, and that's, uh, you make. A video on an article that you read so popper is the future of magic um as a speculation yeah i would say go all in i'm all in and popper the only two things i'm buying right now is re reserve list cards now let me clarify what type of reserve list cards anything that has not spiked yet i will take in any amount so this is like mirage visions or even unlimited cards i'm really interested in right now reserve list or not and then popper cards. Uh, the reason that I'm interested in popper cards is because of A, when someone has these cards, they normally have 8, 10, sometimes 20 of them, and they just want to get rid of them, and there's so much value in them. I would much rather have 20 cards I can flip than one card that, you know, that standard card I can go up and down all the time. Popper is a very stable format. And when I sell it, I can sell them in play sets. I don't need to sell them one by one. I can sell them in play sets. So those are the two cards that I'm only buying. Those are the two singles I'm only buying. I'm not buying standard. I'm not buying modern. I'm definitely not buying modern. Modern. A lot of you guys are like, oh, let's buy some modern right now because it's cheap. Yeah, buy it to play, but don't buy to spec on because eventually it'll be reprinted again. 
Now, many of you will say, what about Popper? What if the card is reprinted? It's such a low buy entry. Like if you're buying for a store, it's such a low buy that even if it's reprinted, you're still good. Like you're still good because your entry point is so low that it couldn't possibly get lower. It's kind of like buying a bulk rare. All right, you pay 20 cents for the bulk rare. Uh, Star City Game Games pays you 10 cents for it. What's the worst that can happen? You lose 10 cents, but the upside is tremendous, right? If that bulk rare becomes, let's say, Phyrexian Unlife is a good instance. Star City Games sold a YouTuber, I think 10,000 copies or what was it? Like something like 5,000 copies of Phyrexian Unlife for 12 cents a copy. He actually sold them back, <laughs> which is terrible, right? I mean, he could, if he had kept it, it would have been a honeypot for like years. But that's not how the story goes because the Star City Games will always win uh, eventually. But uh, my point is very simple. When you talk about the popper format, it will survive. I'm not sure about modern. I'm not sure about the legacy or vintage. I'm talking about 20 years from now. If you look at older games, um, I play in Yasha TCG. No one plays that because no one has cards. I have boxes of them because I love the game. And people, because it's harder to come by, they only play these popper like decks. No one's playing the best version of the deck because no one has it. And that is a problem. And you want the power levels to be the same. So everyone just powers down their decks to make sure that it's just, it's equal playing field. Popper is great. Uh, it sells amazing. Uh, it moves very quickly. People buy, buy and play sets. You know, people like buying entire decks. So unlike a standard deck, you couldn't, if, let's say that you want to make a standard deck, very volatile. Rotation will kill any profits you have. And for you to have someone, hey, do you have $400 for a deck? Buy this. They can buy a Nintendo Switch with two of the best games. They can buy so much, right? That's why you build these decks in pieces. Because if you actually thought about buying the whole deck in standard, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't buy the whole thing. But for Popper, here's the $20 deck. Do you want to? Okay, $20. That's like a pre-release. I'll buy it. And they can enjoy it for a long time. And that's my strategy. My strategy is only reserve list, but particularly reserve list. No reserve list cards over 100. Definitely none. And uh, mostly these bulk reserve list cards that have not yet spiked because they eventually will. And even if the five cents becomes $5, I can buy list it for, let's say, worst case scenario, $2. That's a really, really good buy. And then popper cards. Popper is gonna move because I know Telerian is gonna continue to make videos about it. And as long as he makes a video about like Shadowborn Apostle or something like that, that card goes from 15 cents, 25 cents to $4 overnight. And now everyone needs like 40 of them. And that's amazing. That's amazing. And as long as he continues to produce these videos, the popper cards will continue to sell well. They will continue to spike. I have no doubt in my mind that it is beneficial for him to focus on popper. Today, he made like a key forge video, like a keystone, a new card game on, for magic players. And that also tells me that he's not actually... Uh, as big of a sellout as some people because he's making videos about non-magic related products as well for magic players which wizard coast can probably not the happiest about but what can they do so popper uh if i had to tell you go buy one thing today it would be a popper deck if i told you to speculate on something it would be popper cards uh, they're just very stable and your buy at your entry point is so low it's one thing when you can buy an entire popper deck for la less than any video game. It's something entirely different when you have to spend $1,000 to buy a legacy deck or if you're underground seas and your tundras. You know what you can get with it? You can get almost a used car. You can probably get a really bad used car for the price of a legacy deck. Think about that for a moment. That's crazy. You can buy a refrigerator. You can buy, you can buy so many things to make your life better. For a popper deck, what's twenty dollars? That's that's a night. That's 
watching a movie. That's watching a movie with some popcorn. It's a good, it's an easy entry point. It's a fun and powerful format where you get to do really cool stuff. And you have YouTubers like Tolari and Community College promoting it all, all the time and spiking certain cards. I don't know what card will spike next, but if I have a good portfolio of all the cards, I know that some of them will be featured in a video by Tolarian, and then I can sell them to a player in my store. Anyway, bye guys.